بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا so we come now to the to the last session the final session of this class and subhanallah this is truly my favorite session because you can imagine now after 13 years in Mecca the relationship the Prophet ﷺ has with Jibreel alayhi salam now they're beyond fully acquainted with one another now there is pure love between them when the Prophet ﷺ made hijrah to Medina there is a particular man and you're going to wonder why I'm bringing him into the picture but inshallah ta'ala you'll understand there's a particular companion by the name of Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu his job, he was a poet and he actually used to get paid for his poetry. You know why? Because his poetry was to diss people, right? He was a professional disser. Literally, he'd get paid by people to look at you and to tell you how ugly you were and tell you how poor you were and tell you how low your family was and tell you how raggedy your clothes look. And <laughs> Hassan literally made a living. I know that's an awesome job, right? He literally made a living off of that. Looking at people and putting them down, tearing them up on behalf of someone else. So Hassan's from Medina. They hired him to go out and see the Prophet ﷺ when they were entering into Medina so that he could author a poem about him. So all the Ansar are waiting in the trees, waiting outside, waiting for him every day. Hassan's just standing there waiting for him as well so that he could author that poem. So when the Prophet ﷺ enters into Medina, instead of saying anything bad about him, Hassan's like, I've got nothing. He authors one of the most beautiful poems about the Prophet ﷺ in history. And he becomes Muslim on the spot. So Hassan accepted Islam the moment the Prophet ﷺ entered into Medina. Now here's the thing, the Prophet ﷺ obviously had his share of naysayers in Medina as well. People that would mock him and some people that would come and challenge him in very you know, conniving ways and things of that sort. But the Prophet ﷺ was kind, he was humble, he wouldn't respond on, on behalf of himself most of the time. So Hassan ibn Thabit took it upon himself to basically defend the Prophet ﷺ against anyone that said anything about him. So a person says something about the Prophet ﷺ, walks in the masjid and disrespects him, Hassan stands up and starts going off on him. And Hassan also stands up and starts saying beautiful things about the Prophet ﷺ. So he authored poetry in praise of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Sahaba loved it. They loved it to a point that they built him a manbar. In the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a manbar for the Prophet ﷺ. The companions actually built a pulpit for Hassan to stand up and respond to people whenever they came and spoke to the Prophet ﷺ. So Hassan who stands up for the first time on that manbar. The Prophet ﷺ looks at him and his eyes get really big. So they come to the Prophet ﷺ and they say, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? He said, Jibreel is with him right now. Jibreel is standing with Hassan right now. And in fact, every single time Hassan stood up to speak, the Prophet ﷺ would say, Uhjul mushrikeen ya Hassan, fa inna Jibreel ma'ak. Respond to them, O oh Hassan, Jibreel is with you right now. And as Hassan would be about to stand up to speak, the Prophet ﷺ would make the dua, Allahumma ayyidhu bi ruhil qudus. O oh Allah, support him with the Holy Spirit, with Jibreel alayhi salam. So Hassan stands up there, Jibreel automatically comes down and starts helping Hassan in responding to the things that are said about the Prophet ﷺ. You want to know what's amazing about that? And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, when anyone responds to insults on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ, and obviously we've got to qualify, it doesn't mean killing cartoonists and it doesn't mean Paris and it doesn't mean that stuff. It means when you intellectually defend the Prophet ﷺ, when you, when, you, when you remove the doubts about his character, when you respond to the things that are said about him, Jibreel alayhi salam would support him. His proof, the ayah and Surah Al-Mujadila, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله. So he said, you would not. Allah Azza wa says, you would not find a people who believe in Allah in the last day that love those that 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 show enmity to Allah and the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, even if it was their families, their fathers, their brothers, whatever it may be. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says at the end of it, what? أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has written. Faith in their hearts, and what does he say at the end of that ayah? وَأَيَّدَهُمْ بِرُوحٍ مِنْ And he supports them with the spirit from him. Ibn al-Qayyim says, when anyone 
response. And subhanAllah, I can tell you, ask anyone that's in the field of da'wah that speaks, when you start talking about the character of the Prophet Sallallahu it's different. I've never had a conversation with anyone about the character of the Prophet Sallallahu responding to anything that was said about him, except that the other person was convinced. I've never seen people you know, not moved by the character of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And obviously, when you respond to all the terrible lies that are said about him in the media and so on and so forth. That's a way to actually bring Jibreel into your life practically. Respond on behalf of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jibreel comes into your life. So anyway, that's there. But who was the tribe that put Hassan up to it? It was a tribe by the name of Bani Quraidha. Now Bani Quraidha is a tribe that already hated the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he even got to Medina. They already decided that we're going to take him as an enemy. Why? Because they were waiting for a messenger of Allah and it didn't turn out to be from their people and they expected that it would be from their people. And there's this thought because Bani Quraidah happens to be a Jewish tribe. There's this, this thought that there was enmity between the Muslims and the Jews which is utterly untrue. It's completely untrue. In fact, the neighbor of the Prophet ﷺ for his entire life was a Jew. It was a Jewish family. Rasulullah ﷺ would visit them. He visited the man when his son became sick. His son took shahada when he died with the approval of his father. The Prophet ﷺ used to be frequent in visiting him. There were Jewish, there were, there were large groups of Jews that accepted Islam. The two chief rabbis in Medina, Abdullah ibn Salam, Hussein ibn Salam, who became Abdullah ibn Salam. Zayd ibn Sa'na, may Allah be pleased with them both, both accepted Islam. So Bani, Bani Quraidah happens to be a tribe that rejects the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they rejected him in nasty ways, okay? They met, they met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they asked him a bunch of questions. He answered all of their questions the way that he was supposed to answer them. So they recognized that someone is giving him the answers, meaning that he has a presence that's giving him the answers. So they say at the end of that conversation, they say, Ya Abu al-Qasim, calling him by his kunya, the father of Qasim, as a means of respect, baqiyat wahida, right? We have one more question for you. We've asked you all these questions. We have one more question for you. Tukhbiruna man waliyuka min al-malaika. Tell us who your guardian, who your protector from the angels is. Who is your wali from the malaika? Imma taba'naak wa imma faraqnaak. As a result of that, we will either follow you or we will leave you. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wali min al malaika Jibreel. My wali from the angels is Jibreel. You know what their response was? They said, Hadal ladi yanzil bil harbi wal qital. Are you talking about that one that comes down with death and destruction? They insulted Jibreel alayhi salam. They said, Law qulta Mika'il. Had you said Mika'il, la tabarnak, we would have followed you. We, we're okay with Michael. We're okay with Mikal. Had you said him, we would have followed you. But we want nothing to do with you or Jibreel. You can turn away, we want nothing to do with you or Jibreel. Now subhanAllah, Allah defended Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah revealed an ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلِ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Say whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, to Jibreel, say that he is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to your, the, the revelation with to your heart by his permission. And Allah praises Jibreel alayhi salam. Interestingly enough, in Judeo-Christian thought, by the way, Michael is the only archangel named in the Bible. And Michael, by consensus of Judeo-Christian uh, scholars, is more, it has a higher status than Gabriel. However, they don't necessarily, they don't take Gabriel as an enemy. To the contrary, they praise Gabriel and they speak well of him. This tribe took it to an extreme. They said, you know what, we don't like Jibreel. We're, we're okay with Mikal. We don't like Jibreel, alayhi salam. And Allah actually revealed an ayah in defense of Jibreel alayhi salam. Now, moving forward, obviously, the people of Mecca decided to pursue the Muslims in Medina, and here they are now, a handful of people. They don't have much, they don't have much to defend themselves with. They're only 313 at this point, all right? The mushrikeen from Mecca, they send a thousand. They say, we'll send three to their one. Not only that, we'll send plenty of horsemen. They didn't have any horses or camels to fight with. They didn't have horses or camels that would work in battle. The people of Mecca said, we'll send multiple horses and we'll even send extra horses and camels and we'll put wine on them so that when you finish killing them, you can celebrate over their dead bodies. So trying to look at the arrogance and the audacity of the people in Mecca. Little did they know, it doesn't go that way. It doesn't work that way. So as Badr is coming up, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam gets word from Jibreel alayhi salam that he's going to have some support on that day. All right? And to give you an idea of how this works, there's actually a biblical mention of this as well. Jibreel as leading the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
in Joshua 5, 13 to 15. Joshua 5, 13 to 15, when Yusha, Joshua alayhi salam, reached Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, a man was standing before him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or are you for our enemies? And he said, no, but I am the commander of the army of your Lord. So this is Jibreel alayhi salam, right? The angel who leads also the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the army of the angels. Now, Jibreel alayhi salam is always there with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in all of these battles. And in fact, Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, he used to say before every battle, like he used to say this, and this is in Bukhari, he used to say, Rasulullah fina wa ruhul qudusi laysa lahu kifa'u. He's like, we're fine. The Messenger of Allah is amongst us and Jibreel has no match. It doesn't matter who's coming to fight us. It doesn't matter how many weapons they have. It doesn't matter how many horses they have. Hassan knows how Jibreel's support comes into play. He says, Ruh al Qudusi laysa lahu kifa'u. Jibreel will have no match. Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said as they were marching to the, to the battlegrounds of Badr, he says, Wa bi Badrin hina tumha wujuhahum Jibreel tahta liwa'ina wa Muhammadu. He said on the, on the day of Badr, when their faces were humiliated, the enemies were humiliated, Jibreel was standing under our banner and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So they start this battle and before the battle, something interesting happens. Now to put, to give you proper context, the Prophet sallallahu said the worst day of the year for shaitan. Shaitan hates no day more than what day? Ramadan's not a day. It might be for you, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Ramadan's a month, people, come on. <laughs> What's the worst day of the year for shaitan? What day does shaitan hate more than any other day? Arafah, the day of Arafah. The Prophet said, there is no day that shaitan is more humiliated and despised than the day of Arafah, right? Why? Because shaitan has been working on a person to make him slip and go to hell for 70, 80 years. He stands up and says, Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, on the day of Arafah. Allah forgives him. On that day, the Prophet ﷺ said, more people are forgiven and freed from the fire than any other day of the year. So shaitan hates Arafah. That's the worst day of his life, except that the Prophet ﷺ says, illa Badr, except for the day of Badr. So we said, Ya Rasulullah, what, what's up with the day of Badr? He says, Ama innahu qad ra'a Jibreel yaza'ul malaika. Didn't he see Jibreel getting the angels ready for battle? Meaning Badr was supposed to be the end of Islam. Badr was supposed to be the day we do away with the Muslims and we eliminate this cancer once and for all and we kill them all and we massacre them and we never have to worry about Islam again. So it's, it's a greater prize than just taking one person to hell. We ruin Islam, we ruin the message. Shaitan shows up on the day of Badr, he sees Jibreel and he knows how this goes. He knows exactly how this goes. He's seen it go down way too many times in the past to have any hope whatsoever now that his army is going to win that day. The Prophet ﷺ before the day of Badr, he says, هَذَا Jibril. Here is Jibreel. He's holding the reins of his horse. And he's ready to go. How many of them are there, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has sent 3,000 of them. Why is that number significant? Allah says it in the Quran as well. Why is it significant? Because the believers were outnumbered three to one, 1,000 to 313. Allah sent 3,000 angels for their 1,000. This isn't going to go well for them. <laughs> Rasulullah also said that Jibreel is wearing a golden colored turban. You know why? Because as Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu ta'ala anhu was wearing a golden colored turban and he was leading the believers, the human soldiers of that day. Jibreel alayhi salam kana yatamathalu bihi. He was, he was following as Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu while all the other angels were wearing white turbans. They're ready to go. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, to give you an idea of how this battle goes. Umar radiallahu anhu says, look, we've seen strange things in our lives. We've seen strange things. Nothing stranger than the day of Badr. He said, we didn't have to do anything. We were fighting and people are flying off of their horses. <laughs> we had absolutely nothing to do. So Umar radiallahu anhu says, we even saw a man that was one of, one of the believers who, 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 lost his, who lost his weapons and there was a horseman coming after him. So he held himself. You know, because he was going to die. And he was with the Prophet ﷺ and a group of companions. They saw the man and they wouldn't be able to get to him in time. And as he was being charged up by the horsemen, he said, we heard a sound, Aqdim Hayzum, go forth Hayzum. And he said, suddenly that man flew off of his horse and died. And we looked at the Prophet ﷺ and we were like, what was that? Rasulullah ﷺ said, Hayzum is an angel from the third heaven. 
Izum is the name of an angel that was sent from the third heaven to protect that man at that moment. Abu Sufyan, who obviously was an enemy, he was on the other side. Abu Sufyan, when he got back to Mecca, and they were shocked because he was a leader, said, how did you guys lose the battle? He said, we fought men that were the size of mountains. They could hit us, we couldn't hit them. They were striking us. Every time we tried to strike them, it didn't work. In fact, Al-Abbas, Al-Abbas came on the side of the mushrikeen. He was concealing his Islam if he became Muslim. He didn't want to fight, so he didn't fight. Al-Abbas was a huge man. He was a huge man. The guy that captured him was Abu Yusur as sulami radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Yusur was really, really, really tiny. So when he came holding Al-Abbas, they were like, how did that happen? And he's like, Ya Rasulullah, there was this man that showed up out of nowhere. I don't know where he came from. He started tying him up with me and that was easy. The Prophet ﷺ says, لَقَدْ أَعَانَكَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ There was a noble angel that supported you in bringing him forth. Umar bin Khattab عنه, also narrates something beautifully. They did salah on the day of Badr, they did prayer. And it was the first time they did Salatul Khawf, the prayer of fear. And he said, we could feel the warmth of the hand of Jibreel alayhi salam as he was arranging our rows for salah. That they were being arranged in their salah even on the day of Badr. So the day of Badr finishes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a victory. But what happened on the day of Badr that was very sad? It was the day of great joy and the day of great sadness. Ruqayya radiallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu passed away on the same day of the, of the victory of Badr. She stayed back with Uthman radiallahu anhu, her husband. And Uthman was watching her and the news that she passed away came at the same time as the news that they won that battle. So Uthman radiallahu anhu became very sad. Uthman and Ruqayya, may Allah be pleased with them both, they were the ideal couple. They, went, they made the hijrah to Habasha together, to Abyssinia together, and they made it to Medina together. And people, you know, husbands used to tell their wives, I love you like Uthman loves Ruqayya. That was the amount of love. So Uthman was crushed radiallahu anhu. And he kind of went, you know, he, he, he avoided people for some time after Badr. And the Prophet ﷺ, he found Uthman radiallahu anhu one day standing alone. And he said to him, Ya Uthman, Malik. He said, Uthman, what is, what's going on? Talk to me. Uthman radiallahu anhu said, the death of Ruqayya. And he said, and something else. The Prophet ﷺ said, what is it? He said, My connection to you was severed by her death. I'm no longer your son-in-law. So it's not just losing her, it's losing you as well. As soon as Uthman said that, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Uthman, hada Jibreel. Jibreel is with me. Akhbarani anna Allah qad zawajaka um Kulthum. Jibreel is here and Jibreel just said, Marry to him your other daughter Um Kulthum with the same sadaq, with the same dowry, and ala mithli suhbatiha. Treat her the way that you treated Rukhayya. Jibreel was with the Prophet ﷺ as he goes to see Uthman ta'ala anhu at that moment. And by the way, Jibreel particularly loved Uthman. And in fact, Jibreel kana yastahi min Uthman. His modesty used to show with Uthman ta'ala anhu. So Jibreel is very modest. Uthman was the most modest of the companions. And the Prophet ﷺ, he used to act a different way in front of Uthman. In a way, he wouldn't even act with Abu Bakr and Umar. He would sit up straight, he would fix his clothes, he acted in a certain way. And Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, why do you do that? He said, Ala astahi min rajul. Shouldn't I be a shy of a, shouldn't I be shy of a man? Tastahi minhu al The angels are shy of that man. Jibreel is shy of that man. Of course I'm shy around that man. So Jibreel alayhi salam is with the Prophet ﷺ during Badr, after Badr, and in these very intimate moments as well. Interestingly enough, Jibreel comes to the Prophet ﷺ after the Battle of Badr. In, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari. He says to the Prophet ﷺ, how do you, the companions, view the veterans of Badr amongst you? The veterans of Badr were very special people. They were very special people. In fact, the way we treat our veterans here in this country as well, we honor them, respect them, right? They're mentioned before gatherings and things of that sort. The Prophet ﷺ honored the veterans of Badr in any situation he could. Before gatherings, he honored them. You know, even the Khulafa afterwards, they honored the veterans of Badr because of what they, you know, how they sacrificed themselves when really, it, you know, the prospects were not good. I mean, it didn't look good for them, but they still put it all on the line and they defended themselves, right? And, and, and as a result of that, look what happened. Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ honored them. So when Jibreel asked the Prophet ﷺ that question, how do you view the veterans of Badr amongst you? The Prophet ﷺ said, Khiyarana. They're the best of us. Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, وَكَذَلِكَ هُمْ عِنْدَنَا خِيَارُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And likewise to us, they're the best of the angels. 
we consider the veterans of Badr amongst us to be the best of us. SubhanAllah, because they were in support of the Messenger Sallallahu What about the Battle of Uhud? Rasulullah Sallallahu says, on the day of the Battle of Uhud, he said, I saw myself and there was no one around me illa Jibreel an yamini wa Talha an yisari. He says, except Jibreel was on my right and Talha was on my left. So Jibreel Sallallahu was there defending him on the day of Uhud as well. In the Battle of Khandaq, now realize in the Battle of Khandaq now, we're talking about close to 100,000 people coming from outside to massacre the Muslims. And the only way they protected themselves was they built, was they built a trench. At the suggestion of Salman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Persian, they built a trench so that they could not come into Medina you know, through that trench. So they protected themselves that way. So no actual fighting took place over there. However, what tribe cooperated with the outsiders to attack from inside? Bani Quraidha. The Prophet ﷺ was unaware of that. Rasulullah ﷺ, he went home after they built the trench. Aisha radiallahu anha says, Rasulullah ﷺ got home after he built the trench. He took off his armor and he went to wash himself where suddenly we heard a loud noise at the door. So the Prophet ﷺ, he put his clothes on, he went to the door, he opened the door, Jibreel ﷺ was standing there. And Rasulullah said he still had his armor on and Jibreel alayhi salam, and not his armor, he was holding his sword. And he said, Qad silah, You've put down your stuff. Wallahi ma wallahtu, we haven't put ours down. The Prophet thinks there is no battle. What's going on here? So Rasulullah said, Ila ain, where to? Fa'ashara ila Bani Quraidha. Jibreel simply pointed in the direction of Bani Quraidha and they foiled a plot that was, that was being made from inside to kill people. And actually, they attacked the women and children. If you see the story of Umm Sulaim, Umm Sulaim, she fought them off from the women and children. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says that we will never forget in Medina the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam walking towards Banu Ghanim, walking towards the area of Bani Quraidha. And he said the dirt that was kicking up behind him from the procession of the army of Jibreel alayhi salam. Some mighty army that walks with the Prophet ﷺ of angels and uh, with the believers in this case. Now, obviously, put the battles aside. Rasulullah ﷺ also has Jibreel to celebrate him with him in Hajjat al Wada' as well. The only Hajj the Prophet ﷺ made. Now, you guys know when you go for Hajj and you're getting on the bus and you're leaving, and everyone's really excited when they do Ihram, and they say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik la Sharika Laka Labbaik, and they're really into the Talbiya. Then like five minutes later, it's just And they got the weird, awkward, you know, phone, phone tunes going off and stuff like that. Right? Everyone stops doing talbiyah. Now with the Prophet and the companions, they're walking into Mecca, which, which was previously hostile territory. And this is the only time they're doing hajj and they have no weapons on them. And they're in ihram, they're pretty exposed and vulnerable. Meaning if the people of Mecca want to change their minds and attack them, they will. So they were doing talbiyah like this. They weren't doing it loud. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel came to me. And Jibreel said, Ya Muhammad, mur ashabak an yarfa aswatahum fit talbiyah. Jibreel came to me and said, Ya Muhammad, tell your companions, raise their voices in talbiyah. Don't lower your voices in talbiyah, raise your voices in talbiyah. We've got your back. Nothing's going to happen to you guys. SubhanAllah. So they started to raise their voices after Jibreel told the Prophet ﷺ that. Now, move on. Past that, my favorite part of the class is where it gets personal. The personal incidents and discussions with the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Jibreel was with the Prophet ﷺ in his home many times speaking to him. And in fact, sometimes some people could see him and others could not. Al-Abbas anhu was with his son Abdullah and they went to visit the Prophet ﷺ. And Al-Abbas, he was talking to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ was seemingly ignoring him. So the Prophet ﷺ, you know, just let him go without saying anything to him. And Abbas tells his son Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهما, says, you know, why is it that your cousin is not speaking to me? Why do you think عني, as if he's pu pushing me away? Abdullah says, didn't you see the man that was sitting next to him, Yunajihi, speaking to him? He said, what man? What are you talking about? So Abbas went back to the Prophet ﷺ and said, was there a man that was talking to you and giving you advice right now and giving you, you know, uh, you not, and, and was giving, you know, was speaking to you and reminding you. And Rasulullah says, Why are you asking? He says, Because Abdullah saw him. The Prophet said, Ra'a? <laughs> he saw him? And Al Abbas said, Yes. And the Prophet, he made dua 
to Allah to increase him in knowledge. So there are many personal conversations here. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who knows what, that, what it's like when Jibreel comes to the Prophet ﷺ, you know what he says? The very famous hadith you see in Ramadan, to first give you an idea of what this personal relationship is like, he says the Prophet ﷺ was always extremely generous. But he said, حين يلقاه جبريل When Jibreel would meet him, he would be more generous than what? الريح المرسلة Than a blowing wind. And the scholars say he chose رؤية جبريل Seeing Jibreel, even though it's Ramadan, he chose particularly Jibreel because Jibreel was with the Prophet ﷺ most in Ramadan. And what motivated the Prophet ﷺ was what Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah says, رؤية الصالحين Seeing the righteous people. When the Prophet ﷺ just saw Jibreel, he was more motivated to do good. He was motivated by seeing Jibreel alayhi salam. So that was the type of effect Jibreel had on the Prophet ﷺ personally. What about the Prophet ﷺ to Jibreel? Al-Qadi Ayyad, he writes a very famous seerah of the Prophet ﷺ called Ash-Shifa, the cure. And he says in that book, in the introduction, describing وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً الْعَالَمِينَ When Allah says that we have not sent you except as a mercy to all of the world, he describes a narration, an incident that took place between the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel. Rasulullah ﷺ asked Jibreel, he says, you know Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً الْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a mercy to all of the worlds. He said, did any of my mercy reach you? I mean, you're part of the world, you're, part of, you're the realm of the malaika, you're the realm of the angel. Did any of that rahmah reach you? Jibreel alayhi salam responded and he said, Ya Muhammad, Wallahi innaka ahabu al-anbiya ilayhi. He said, I swear by Allah, you are the most beloved of the prophets to me. I've never been sent to someone that I loved more than I loved you. He said, and it was through you that I gained security. What does he mean by that? He said, I used to wonder about my fate until Allah revealed to you عند ذو العرش مكين that he's established in his position with the owner of the throne. Before that was revealed to you, Jibreel used to wonder what would happen to him at the end of this all. When Allah revealed that to the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel felt the rahmah of the Prophet ﷺ. That had never happened before until that was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. So there's that, that's the effect they have on each other. Jibreel continues to reassure the Prophet ﷺ. So a multitude of the personal conversations now in Medina are constant reassurance. Why? Because look, the Prophet ﷺ now was reassured that he's safe and the believers are safe. Who is the Prophet ﷺ worried about now? Us, those that come after. So he cries, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. And Allah sends him Jibreel. And Jibreel says, Ya Muhammad, sanurdika bi ummatik. We will please you with your nation. We will not disappoint you. you want, your nation will be okay. Your ummah will be okay. He comes to reassure the Prophet ﷺ in Medina now because now he's worried about the ummah, those that will come after. They're safe, but what happens afterwards to those that come after? Another time, Umar al Khattab says, and this is in a Bukhari, he says, I was actually walking with the Prophet ﷺ in Medina and we reached Al Harra, an area in Medina, and he told me to sit down. Suddenly he started to walk and he was clearly talking to Jibreel. ﷺ. I could tell he was talking to Jibreel. And he said, they walked for a while and I just sat there. And the Prophet ﷺ, as he's walking back, he's saying, وَإِن زَنَا وَسَرَقْ وَإِن زَنَا وَسَرَقْ وَإِن زَنَا وَسَرَقْ Even if he stole and committed adultery? Even if he stole and committed adultery? And Umar is not hearing the answer. So Umar says, Ya Rasulullah, what was that? The Prophet ﷺ says, that was Jibreel. He came to me to give me the glad tidings that each and every single person of this ummah would enter Jannah, would eventually enter Paradise. So the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِنْ زَنَا وَسَرَقْ Even if he stole and committed adultery? Yes, even if he stole and committed adultery, eventually he would enter into paradise. Eventually he would enter into Jannah. So he eases the Prophet ﷺ in that way. What about when the Prophet ﷺ becomes physically sick? Do you know that some of the du'as of ruqya that we learn to read upon a person are from Jibreel ﷺ? How? The Prophet ﷺ, when he became sick, he said, Jibreel came to me and said to me, Ya Muhammad, oh Muhammad, ishtakait, are you feeling ill? Are you sick? And I said, naam, I said yes. So he said, Jibreel started to rub his hands on my face and on my chest and said, Bismillahi arqika min kulli shay'in yu'dhika. In the name of Allah, I seek a cure for you from everything that is harming you. Min sharri kulli nafsin aw aynin aw hasid. From, from the evil of any, of, of any evil person or any envious eye, Allah yashfika, may Allah cure you. Bismillahi arqika. In the name of Allah, 
I seek a cure for you. So we actually learned that, that dua from Jibreel reading it over the Prophet ﷺ. However, the most profound of these conversations are the ones where Jibreel is giving advice to the Prophet ﷺ. Can you imagine getting access to that conversation? Sayyidul Malaika, the chief of the angels, gives advice to Sayyidul Walid, what, what the Adam, to the chief of mankind. Gives him advice. And subhanAllah, when you think about how profound that is, I mean, we're, we're blessed to have access to those conversations because it's advice for all of us. And Jibreel gives advice to the Prophet ﷺ? Yes, he does. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ was seen going to his neighbor's house, the Jewish neighbor, by the way, over and over and over again, taking them things, serving them. And the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, we noticed that all of a sudden, you keep going to your neighbor's house. He said, Hada Jibreel. Yulsini bil jar, Jibreel was coming to me and advising me, take care of your neighbor, take care of your neighbor, hatta wanantu annahu sayyawarithu. Until I thought Jibreel was gonna say, now you assign inheritance to him. So Jibreel kept coming to me and saying, go to your neighbor, go to your neighbor, go to your neighbor, take care of your neighbor. You know, subhanAllah, serve your neighbor. And this is beautiful because that's a cornerstone of every religion, right? Love thy neighbor, right? This is a part of our faith as well. That Jibreel, that's what he says to him over and over and over again. The Prophet ﷺ also was once seen saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you saying Ameen? He said, well, Jibreel was making dua. And Jibreel made dua against three people. The one whose parents reach old age and he doesn't honor them. Jibreel said, Rahima Anfu. You know, SubhanAllah, Jibreel ﷺ made dua against that person, may be humiliated. The second person, the one who Ramadan comes and goes and he's not forgiven by his creator. It's such a merciful month. It's a month of mercy. How can Ramadan come upon you and leave you and you're not forgiven by your Lord? The third one, the one who hears the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and doesn't say sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Jibreel Islam found that offensive. But what's it like when Jibreel decides to tell the Prophet sallallahu something, when he gives him life advice? Now this narration that I'm about to share with you, is towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that because of the age of the Sahaba that narrated it. They were young children that narrated this narration. It happens when the Prophet ﷺ now is established, he's successful, everything is done, right? People are coming into the religion and throng, everything is, is done. Jibreel comes to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, now, by the way, does Allah ever say to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Muhammad in the Quran? No. Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of God, O Messenger of God. So why is it that Jibreel has the audacity to say Ya Muhammad? In fact, the scholars say when Jibreel says Ya Muhammad, he's telling the Prophet ﷺ, this is outside of the capacity of revelation. What I'm about to say to you is from me Jibreel to you Muhammad. So that's the only time he doesn't say Ya Rasulullah is when I want to tell you something just between me and you now. Okay? So he says, Ya Muhammad, five advices here. Ish ma shi't fa inna kamayit. Live as you will, but know that one day you're going to die. One day you're going to die. He says, Wahbib ma shi't fa inna kamufariku. Love whom you will, but know that one day you will be separated from that person. So the first ones don't get attached to this, this world. Your purpose lies beyond this world. Don't get attached to people of this world because eventually they will leave you and you will leave them. Do as you will and know that you will be compensated and rewarded accordingly. The compensation is in the hereafter. Meaning what? Everything comes in the hereafter. All the reward comes in the hereafter. Keep doing what you do and know that the reward is in the hereafter. So the first one, live as you will but know that one day you're going to die. وَحْبِبْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Love who you will, but know that one day you will be separated from that person. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌ بِهِ Do as you will, and know that one day you will be rewarded accordingly. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ Know that the nobility of the believer is his standing up in prayer at night. It's not in being a ruler, it's not in having thousands of followers, it's not in being a king, it's not in having this or having that. The nobility of a person comes from his standing up in prayer at night, invoking his Lord. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنَ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْهِ وَعِزَّهُ And as for his dignity, اِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ It's his being independent of people. 
financially, emotionally, mentally, physically. Your izzah, your dignity as a person is try not to be dependent on people. Try to absolve yourself of needing people in any way whatsoever. That's profound life advice right there. SubhanAllah, that's something that we can all take to ourselves. Now the next incident I'll share with you is actually Jibreel giving advice in a very subtle way, but it's profound advice as well. This narration that I'm about to share with you is so profound. Al-Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah in his famous book Al-Khushu' fi salah Humility and Prayer, the last chapter is just about this hadith, even though it has nothing to do with prayer, because of what it means. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in authentic hadith that I was sitting with Jibreel alayhi salam. فَإِذَا شَقَّ أُفُقُ السَّمَاءِ And then all of a sudden the sky split, وَنَزَلَ مَلَكَ And an angel came down. فَأَقْبَلَ إِلَيْنَا And he started to come close to us. Now you want to know what makes this narration so strange? Rasulullah ﷺ says, فَلَمَّا رَآهُ جِبْرِيلِ تَسَاغَرْ When Jibreel saw this angel, he became smaller, he held himself. The ulama say tasagar, he held himself, like bracing for something. The angel came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, inni Rasulullahi ilayk. I'm a messenger that's been sent to you from God. Ukhayiruka. I'm giving you a choice. Bayna an takuna. Nabiyan abda o nabiyan malika. I'm here to give you a choice. Either you live, you're a prophet who lives like a king or a prophet that lives like a humble slave. Who can give me an example of nabiyan malika? A prophet that lives like a king. Sulaiman alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, and Nabi and Malika means that you'll live comfortable. Look, you can have a great life, live very comfortably, be a king, have the riches of this world, do whatever you want, and you'll still have the hereafter. It's not going to decrease from you in any way whatsoever. So you can either be that or you can continue to live like a humble slave. I mean, the Prophet used to go nights in hunger, stones tied to his stomach. He suffered from poverty at the very worst, even after success, right? So you have a choice now. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَنَظَرْتُ إِلَى جِبْرِيلِ I looked at Jibreel. He said, فَأَشَارَ إِلَيَّ أَنْ تَوَاضَعُ Jibreel did this. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I said to him, بَلْ نَبِيًا عَبْدًا I'll choose to be a prophet that lives like a humble slave. So the angel left. So I looked at Jibreel salam. This was very strange. Jibreel alayhi salam said, هَذَا الْمَلَكِ This angel, لَمْ يَنزِلْ قَبْلَ الْيَوْمِ He's never been down before this day. So the Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَا بَالُكَ تَسَغَرْتْ Why is it that you got smaller and, and, and we're afraid? He said, وَاللَّهِ مَا ظَنَنْتُهُ نَزَلَ إِلَّا بِقِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ He said, I swear by Allah, I didn't think that he came except to announce the Day of Judgment. Who was that angel? Israfil. When Jibreel saw Israfil come down, he thought it was all over. So Jibreel even became afraid at the sight of Israfil. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, the, he ends his book, with Bal Nabi and Abda, choose to be a humble servant. And how did this affect the Prophet ﷺ physically as well? I mean, obviously, he continued to live in very humble means. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to eat his food, sometimes he'd lay back, recline, and eat. But after that incident, the Prophet ﷺ would only eat his food sitting up. So the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why is it that you only eat your food sitting up? He said, Because this is more befitting for Nabi and Abda, for a Prophet that will live like a humble slave. So it affected the Prophet ﷺ. That incident actually affected the Prophet ﷺ. Now afterwards, as the Prophet ﷺ starts to experience the end of his life, as it starts to go further and further and further, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was standing amongst us and Rasulullah ﷺ was speaking and the Prophet ﷺ he simply said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَيِّرَ عَبْدًا بَيْنَ الدُّنْيَا وَبَيْنَ مَا عِنْدَ Allah has given a choice to one of His servants between that which is in this world and that which is with Allah. He said, and that servant chose that which is with Allah. Now the Prophet ﷺ was completely healthy, nothing was wrong with him. So the Sahaba assumed what? That this is just some analogy that he's giving. He's just talking about some servant, maybe in the past or something like that. He was given the choice between that of this world and that of the hereafter. But Abu Sa'id says, Abu Bakr broke down into tears. And he said, عَجِبْنَا لِبُكَاءِ All of us were shocked by his tears. And in one narration he even said, بَكَيْنَا لِبُكَاءِ We started to cry because of his crying, not knowing why he was crying. It was just the pain that Abu Bakr showed through his crying affected all of us. So we all started crying because we knew something just happened. And he said, later on we realized that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about himself. هُوَ الْمُخَيَّرِ He was the one that was given that choice. And Abu Bakr was the only one who caught it. It was just Abu Bakr that realized that the Prophet basically just said that I've been given a choice between this life and the hereafter. 
From that incident onwards, the health of the Prophet ﷺ started to deteriorate rapidly. The fever got to him and Rasulullah ﷺ started, you know, slowly, slowly, his mobility was reduced. He couldn't come out as frequently, couldn't walk, he couldn't stand when he prayed. It started to affect the Prophet ﷺ and started to get to him. And Rasulullah ﷺ, the last time he prayed with the Sahaba, he prayed how? He, he came out, Abu Bakr was leading the Salah and he led the prayer sitting down even. He led them in prayer sitting down and the companions were excited about that. But what happens at the end? Anas ibn Malik who says that we were praying in the masjid and the Prophet وسلم, he, he moved his curtain and when he pulled his curtain, tabassama lahika, he smiled and he laughed. And he says, Kana wajahu waraqatu mushaf. Said his face was as bright as a page of the mushaf. I mean, it was, he was so happy. He laughed and he smiled. At what? At seeing a few hundred people praying. Because he recognized the accomplishment there. That a few hundred people are praying, that they accepted this message and they're praying to their Lord. SubhanAllah, imagine now <laughs> two billion people, right? The Prophet ﷺ, when he saw that, he was happy, he was pleased that they're praying. I did what I had to do. So Anas anhu said, we looked at the Prophet ﷺ and we started to get excited in our prayer because we thought he was going to come out. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he signaled to us to keep praying and he drew his curtain closed once again. And that was the last time we saw the Prophet ﷺ. Inside of his home, everyone was crying because they knew that the Prophet ﷺ's time was nearing its end. It was getting, to, it was getting close. Fatima radiallahu anha particularly was deeply devastated. His daughter, Ummu Abiha, the mother of her father, subhanAllah, Fatima was with the Prophet ﷺ through it all. And the Prophet ﷺ loved her and adored her. And even though the Prophet ﷺ could barely speak, he called for Fatima with his hand. So Fatima came and the Prophet ﷺ, he told her to come close and he whispered something in her ear and it caused her to cry even more. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told her, come back. And he whispered something else in her ear. And she, she just burst into laughter. <laughs> and Aisha radiallahu anha was watching all of this. She was perplexed by it. Like, why did you cry and then laugh so suddenly? So she kept pushing Fatima. What did he tell you? What did he tell you? What did he tell you? So finally Fatima gave in and she said that the first time he told me that Jibreel usually reviews the Qur'an with me once in Ramadan. This year he did it twice. Which means التمكن في الوحي. It means solidifying the revelation. And so I don't think I'm going to make it past the sickness. The second time the Prophet ﷺ, he said to me that you will be the first one to join me. He just told a young girl, a young lady in her 20s that you're about to die too. And you're going to join me too. And Fatima burst out into hysterical laughter because she knows that means being with the Prophet ﷺ. And that was enough for her. That made her happy. If it means being with the Prophet ﷺ, that made her happy. SubhanAllah, it shows you how much of a loving father the Prophet ﷺ was to his daughter. Aisha radiallahu anha then, she was you know, moving the Prophet ﷺ where he needed to be moved. She held the Prophet ﷺ tight and Rasulullah ﷺ was leaning against her chest. And Rasulullah ﷺ, his eyes fell to the side on Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu anha, anhu, her brother, and he had a siwak in his pocket. And Aisha says the Prophet Sallallahu eyes fell on it and so I knew that he wanted it. So I said to Rasulullah Sallallahu you want that, that toothbrush, the siwak? And the Prophet Sallallahu he nodded his head. So Abdurrahman gave it to her and it still wasn't used. So she chewed it and she softened it and she put it in the mouth of the Prophet Sallallahu Now what's so symbolic about that is that the Prophet Sallallahu he used to brush his teeth before every single prayer. Because he wanted to have fresh breath when he met Allah five times a day. He said if he could make it mandatory on us, he would. But he, knew, he knows it would be a hardship. So he always brushes his teeth before he meets Allah. Aisha says, as soon as he finished using the siwak, دَخَلَ عَلَيْنَا Jibril. Jibreel entered upon us. Now, she looked at the Prophet ﷺ and she said the Prophet ﷺ's face lit up. Huge smile on his face. SubhanAllah. He was so happy to see Jibreel. And you know what I think about this, 23 years before this incident, how traumatized was the Prophet ﷺ by the side of Jibreel? And he didn't even know who Allah was or what Allah wanted from him. اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق In just 23 years, the most beloved sight to the Prophet ﷺ was seeing Jibreel salam. And Jibreel salam said to the Prophet ﷺ, the one who gave him all those advices we talked about, he said to him, look, I'm here to give you a choice. 
either you can choose to remain amongst your companions and live well, or you can have the companionship of the Most High, Al-A'la, Allah. Jibreel alayhi salam, when he said that, the Prophet وسلم, responded, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, Allahumma al-Rafiq al-A'la. Oh Allah, the companionship of the Most High. I want the companionship of the Most High. I want the companionship of the Most High. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that the Prophet وسلم, soul left his body as he was saying, al-Rafiq al-A'la, the Most High, the companionship of the Most High. His hand fell and the Prophet وسلم, died. Aisha radiallahu anha, when that happened, she screamed. And everyone, when they heard the scream of Aisha, they knew that, they knew that the Prophet وسلم, passed away. Fatima radiallahu anha, she was sitting in the hijr, she was sitting in the, the room next door. And when she heard that, she authored some, she said some of the most beautiful words. She knew that she was about to die as well, by the way. And subhanAllah, the prophecy was fulfilled because Fatima got sick four months later and died out of nowhere. Fatima radiallahu anha, when she heard Aisha scream, she looked up and she said, Ya abata, min rabbihi ma adna. Oh my dear father, how close you are now to your Lord. Ya abata, ila Jibreel an Oh my dear father, to Jibreel we announce your death. Ya abata, jannatul firdawsi ma'wa. Oh my dear father, paradise is now your abode. And she recited it over and over and over again. That how close you are now to Allah. To Jibreel, we announce that you've departed. And Jannah al Firdaus is now your place. Now the Prophet وسلم, he left this world. And subhanAllah, everyone will leave this world. And the Prophet وسلم, said, even Jibreel will die. Can you imagine that? Even Jibreel alayhi salam will die. The Prophet وسلم, said that after the horn is blown, and the only ones that stand, إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ The ones who your Lord willed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have in front of him, Jibreel, Israfil, Mikal, and the angel of death, Al Muqassimati Amra. Those who apportion the command of Allah. And Allah asks the angel of death, Who remains? And the angel of death says, Wajhuka al Baqil Kareem, Oh Allah, your noble face, you're here. Abduka, me, Abduka Jibreel, your servant Jibreel, your servant Mikal, and your servant Israfil. Allah says, Take the soul of Mikal. And Mikal's soul is taken from him. Then he says, who remains? He said, Ya Allah, you, me, Jibreel, and Israfil. And he says, take the soul of Israfil. And Israfil's soul is taken from him. And he says, who remains? And he says, Wajhuka al-Baqil kareem Your noble face, O Allah. Abduka hadha, this servant of yours. Wa abduka Jibreel. We're the last two standing. Allah says, take the soul of Jibreel. The Prophet ﷺ said Jibreel would fall on his face as his wings spread out, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would die in tasbih, subhanAllah. His face hits the ground as he makes tasbih to Allah. Then Allah subhan- then he says, who remains? And the angel of death says, Ya Allah, it's just you and me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angel of death to die. And the angel of death dies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu man alayha fan. Every single person perishes. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ And only the noble face of your Lord remains. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask himself, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom belongs the dominion today? Where are the oppressors? Where are the dictators? Where are the oppressors? Where are those that used to kill innocent people and harm people? Where are those that استكبروا, that, that had pride in this world and that thought that they owned things and thought that they were kings and thought that they had unquestioned authority? Where are they today? Aina Muluk al Ard, where are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Liman al Mulk al-Yom. To whom belongs the dominion today? Allah says to himself, Lillahi al Wahid al Qahar. To Allah, the one, the subduer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only him. Now on the day of judgment, the Prophet says that Tamuddul Ardu li Adamat al Rahmani Yom al Qiyamah. As we all come back, the Prophet says the earth is flattened out of the glory of Allah, in, 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 in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, each and every single person will not be able to move from the spot that they are standing in the place of assembly. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Thumma ud'a awalun nas. And I would be called the first of people. I would be the first person to be called to Allah. And he said, so I would enter upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa akhirru sajida. And I would fall in prostration. He says, Thumma arfa'u ra'si. And I would raise my head 
فإذا جبريل عن يمين الرحمن and suddenly I'll see Jibreel on the right side of the most merciful فأقو... so, so, and, and you know what he says in this hadith subhanallah he says والله ما رآه قبلها I swear by Allah he never saw him before that day Jibreel has never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the vision of Allah cannot be grasped on the day of judgment that would be the first time Jibreel would actually be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala والله ما رآه قبلها so when the Prophet sees him, he points to him and he says, Ya Rabb, inna hadha akhbarani annaka arsaltahu ilayhi. He says, Oh my Lord, this one told me that you sent him to me. فَيَقُولُ Allah صَدَقْتْ Allah says, you've told the truth. The same way Jibreel said to the Prophet صَدَقْتْ You've told the truth. Why does the Prophet ﷺ choose to do that on the Day of Judgment? Why does he feel that inclination? Because on the Day of Judgment, every messenger is being asked whether he delivered the message or not. The Prophet ﷺ vouches for Jibreel before he's even asked. Oh Allah, he said you sent him to me. He did his job. And Allah says, Sadaqt. Now dear brothers and sisters, what's our relationship with Jibreel ﷺ right now? You know, one of my favorite things about teaching this class in particular, SubhanAllah, one of my favorite things about talking about Jibreel, as opposed to talking about some of the companions of the Messenger وسلم, is that you can actually interact with Jibreel right now. You know how? You know how? The Prophet وسلم, he says in an authentic hadith, and actually Anas anhu says, and Abu Talha says, one time the Prophet وسلم, all of a sudden his face was just full of joy. So he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? May Allah keep you happy. He said, Ja'ani Jibreel. Jibreel just came to me. فَقَالْ أَمَا يُرْضِيكَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ أَنْ لَا يُصَلِّي عَلَيْكَ أَحَدْ مِنْ أُمَّتِكْ إِلَّا صَلَّيْتُ عَلَيْهِ عَشْرًا Aren't you pleased though Muhammad وسلم, that no one says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except that I send salawat upon them ten times. Jibreel alayhi salam as well. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي Allah and the angels send their salawat on the Prophet And when you send the salawat on the Prophet Jibreel alayhi salam responds to you as well. Allah responds to you and Jibreel alayhi salam responds to you. So you want Jibreel alayhi salam to say your name right now? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. What about now? Does he stop coming to the earth now? Is he gone? Do we, does he no, never come down anymore? Actually, the Prophet ﷺ, one time he came out, and this is a hadith narrated in Muawiyah, by Muawiyah anhu. We were just sitting in the masjid and we were talking, and suddenly the Prophet ﷺ came out to us, and the Prophet ﷺ, he said to us, what are you talking about? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, we're just talking about how lucky we are, how blessed we are to be guided to Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, is that all you were talking about? They said, Ya Rasulullah, all we were talking about is our days of ignorance and how we're blessed to be guided to Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, don't worry. He said, I just wanted to come to you because Atani Jibreel. Jibreel just came to me. And he said, those companions of yours that are sitting out in the masjid, أَخْبَرَنِي أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَاهِي بِكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Jibreel just came to me and said, Allah is bragging about them to the angels right now. وَإِنَّ اللَّهِ إِذَا حَبَّ عَبْدًا نَادَ جِبْرِيلٍ When Allah loves someone, He calls Jibreel and He says, يَا جِبْرِيلٍ إِنِّي أُحِبُّ فُلَانٍ O oh Jibreel, I love so-and-so. فَأَحِبَّ Love that person as well. فَيُحِبُّهُ جِبْرِيلٍ Jibreel loves you. Jibreel doesn't need to know anything else about you. He just needs to know Allah loves you. And if Allah loves you, that's enough for Jibreel to love you as well. So Jibreel goes and calls all of the angels and the inhabitants of the heavens and says, يَا مَلَائِكَ يَا أَهْلَ السَّمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانَ Allah loves this person, so love him as well. So all of the inhabitants of the heavens love him as well. SubhanAllah. Think about your name being said in this conversation between Allah and Jibreel and Jibreel and the angels. And think about how many likes that is, right? You're talking about trillions of angels that love you. They don't just like you, they love you. وَيُوضَعُ لَهُ الْقَبُولُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And Allah places acceptance for that person in the hearts of the people. That's Jibreel alayhi salam. He continues to be amongst the angels that come down to the gatherings that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah that He be amongst us right now. That's the, the, the question I ask myself every time I teach this class. I'm like, how amazing would it be if Jibreel was actually here right now? If Jibreel alayhi salam is actually amongst us reporting our name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Ramadan, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Tanazzalu al malaikatu wa ruhu fiha. The angels come down. And none other than Jibreel is amongst them. This is in the Arabic language, al khas al am specifying someone amongst them. They came and Jibreel was amongst them. 
Subhanallah. So when you're praying tarawih on that night, or you're reading Quran or doing dhikr, how do you know Jibreel is not the one coming to your house and reporting your name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's something to aim for. That Jibreel comes to my house and reports my name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that night of Laylatul Qadr. And we should have that husn al in Allah, that, that good expectation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that's very possible and that yes, a lowly person like me, Jibreel alayhi salam could be sent to report my name back to my creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, even, you know, every time you see al-ruh wal-malaika, al-malaika wal-ruh, the angels, and Jibreel is specified amongst them. You know, even in some cultures, they, there's, there's a special mention of Jibreel Alayhi Salaam just in our everyday language. Some of the Arabic, uh, some, some of the Arabs, whenever they finish the food and there's the dua, Salat Alaykum al Malaika, may the angels send their prayers upon you. Some of them would say, Illa Jibreel Ba'd al Shay, <laughs> except for Jibreel after the tea, right? It's like there's this recognition, it's inherent inside of us that Jibreel is greater than the rest of the angels. But you know what? What does Allah tell us? Yawma taqoom al Ruhu wal Malaika tusafan. On that day, and Allah puts a ruh this time before the angels, that even a ruh, Jibreel, will be standing in his place and the angels in their rows, they don't speak unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands them, commands them to speak. They do exactly as they're told. Would we meet Jibreel alayhi salam on the day of judgment? Hudayfa radiallahu anhu narrates an authentic athar that Jibreel is the angel that will be in charge of al-mizan, the scales. May Allah make it easy for us on that day, the scales. You would actually see Jibreel alayhi salam on the scales on that day. What about in Jannah? Can you be with Jibreel? Can you actually be with Jibreel telling him about the story of Jibreel and the class that you took? And, and can you talk to Jibreel in Jannah? Can you be with him? Can you? You're with the one that you love. Not only that, the Prophet says, رَأَيْتُ Jafar. I saw Ja'far رضي الله تعالى عنه وَهُوَ يَطِيرُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مَعَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And he was flying in Jannah with the angels. You could get your pair of wings and you could fly with Jibreel alayhi salam in Jannah. We know that that exists. We know that that place is there. But I want to end this night, dear brothers and sisters, with something to make it a little bit more personal now. Jibreel is the wali of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from the angels. Jibreel is his wali. Who is your wali from the angels? It's a powerful question. And what do I mean by that? The Prophet ﷺ said, every night before you go to sleep, an angel comes down to you. And he says, Ikhtim bi khair. Ikhtim bi khair. Ikhtim bi khair. End your night well. End your night well. End your night well. End it with the remembrance of God. End it with an act of charity. End it with a word of kindness. End it with something good. End it with dhikr. End it with wudu. You know? End it with something good, because you might not wake up. End well. The, the angel prompts you, end well. And the Prophet said, a shaitan on the other hand says, ikhtim bi shar, end in evil. And the Prophet said, if you listen to that angel, ikhtim bi khair, and you end your night well, the angel spends the entire night with you, seeking forgiveness for you, and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on you. Until you wake up in the morning, and the angel says, iftah bi khair, iftah bi khair. Iftah bi khair. Start your day off well. Start your day off well. Start your day off well. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if he starts his day off well, the angel spends the entire day with him, seeking forgiveness for him and asking Allah to have mercy on him. That's your wali from the angels. SubhanAllah was just telling Ustad Nu'man what he recited in Salat al Maghrib. Inna ladina qalu rabbuna Allah thumma istaqamu tatanazzalu alayhim al malaika alla takhafu wala tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun nahnu awliya'ukum fil hayat al dunya wa fil akhirah the angels come down to the believer as he's passing away the wali your awliya from the malaika your guardians your protectors the ones who loved you and were with you your entire life from the angels they come to you just as jibril came to the prophet sallallahu and they say don't worry don't grieve we were your awliya in this world and in the hereafter as well. Come out to Jannah. Allah has promised it to you. And the Prophet ﷺ said the believing soul would jump out of this body of joy. It will come out in happiness. SubhanAllah. Whereas some people are to the opposite. billah. Now I want you to think about that for a moment, dear brothers and sisters. And recognize that the angels are the last thing that we see before we come into this world. And the first thing we see as we're leaving it. In fact, from the tests of this world is that it's the only time in our existence that the angels are concealed from us. Because if we saw them, none of us would act the way that we do. But we choose to surround ourselves in our daily lives with angels, be it Jibreel or other angels, 
or with shayateen. We make that choice every single moment of our lives, who to surround ourselves with. And subhanAllah, in closing, I just want you, you know, I, I want to share you, with you guys something very, very personal. And subhanAllah, when I say it's very personal, I say that I literally, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's actually very hard for me to say this. Do you know Dhiya Yusur Razan, the three young people that were murdered in Chapel Hill? May Allah have mercy on them. Do you know that they were sitting in this class right before they died? Do you know that this was the last class that they took? Here they were sitting, listening to Jibreel, the angels, what it's like when you die, how the angels come to you. And the thought that maybe, just maybe, those same angels came to them and that they're actually experiencing that realm right now. When ahsabuhum min ash-shuhada, we ask Allah that they be granted a shahada. That thought, subhanAllah, really is humbling. And in fact, I actually have, someone actually tweeted to me when they passed away, the Snapchat messages from Yusur, rahmatullah alayha, talking about the class. And I read that and I couldn't believe what I was reading. And if I had a screen, I would actually show you a picture of that chat. And just seeing it in front of you. And she's telling a cousin of hers that I just took this class. You've got to take it. It was amazing. I never felt so close to Jibreel alayhi salam. And her cousin saying, is it, you know, is it going to be anywhere? And she says, I think they're going to record it for Bayina TV. They're based out of Dallas. She says, you should look him up. And at the end of the text, she says, you should look up Nurman Ali Khan too. <laughs> I read that and I said, that's the one praise that I will actually take. And I'd say, Alhamdulillah. And I hope she's testifying on her behalf right now. I hope, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she's testifying on our behalf. And that's the one person, subhanAllah, that, that I wouldn't mind taking that praise from right now. May Allah allow them to testify on our behalf. May Allah allow us to be joined with the malaika, with the angels. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be in the highest companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Messenger وسلم, with the angels, with the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, with the righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings and may Allah surround us with the malaika and allow us to end our lives in khayr, allow us to end our lives in good. The brothers and sisters, Jazakumullah khayran for coming out. And alhamdulillah, I want you guys to recognize that, subhanAllah, this, this work that you see going on right now, I want you to realize that almost 200,000 people, that's almost a quarter million people have sat in classes like this. Primarily Ustad Nu'man's story night all over the world. And alhamdulillah, now we have 30,000 people subscribed to Bayana TV where this class inshallah ta'ala will be going up. In fact, this recording, which subhanAllah by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the best class I ever taught out of all the times I've taught story of Jibreel. And I've never seen more people cry in this class than I do right now. And I ask Allah that that be a sign of acceptance. And I hope inshallah ta'ala that all of you will register for Bayana TV and you'll continue to be a part of these amazing projects. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from everyone at Bayana and everyone at Bayana TV and allow this to be a sadaqa jariya for all of us. Jazakumullah khairan to all of you for bearing with me as I stretch the time. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha 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 